everyone, it's TVC Mario. Yep. We're doing this. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Battening. On today's show, we're going to watch somebody who's so unintelligent and so uneducated in science that words simply cannot explain. This guy honestly makes Josh Furstein look pretty reasonable. So without further ado, enjoy. And you're here for a video that I wanted to make to compare Big Bang, the theory of evolution, and the origin of the universe, that ridiculous nonsense. Wait for it. Versus intelligent design evolution and the Big Bang are ridiculous nonsense, and intelligent design is reasonable. Uh, I gotta say, you're gonna have a hard time on this, L. And what I want to show you here is that intelligent design is so much more rational, so much more logical, it doesn't even make sense. I get the sense that you don't understand what the words rational and logical mean, but I will agree with you that it doesn't make sense. But I'll give you your fair time, give us your points. And I cannot even believe that we live in a society here where this is even a debate. Honestly, I can't either. The debates are always pretty boring, and the stagnant religious person always loses, as you're about to see. But then again, you know what? Doesn't surprise me, since the government makes sure to indoctrinate the kids with this false theory of evolution, and they brainwash them to make them think that it's scientific fact, when it's not. It's a fairy tale. Do I have to say it? Do, should I, do I really have to make this point? I mean, really? Uh, fine. You were indoctrinated since you were a child to believe a literal book of fairy tales, you dumbass. And you need more faith to believe in this theory than anything else. Okay, so what Verse Tattoo here is trying to say is that the Big Bang Theory and the Theory of Evolution require blind faith, as opposed to intelligent design that apparently doesn't. So let's have a look at some of the key points of each argument to get a slightly better idea before delving too much deeper. For the claims, we have the Big Bang Theory, the Theory of Evolution, and intelligent design. Note that I have the theory of evolution and not just evolution since evolution is a proven fact of nature that we can observe and the theory of evolution is the theory of how evolution works, the mechanisms that run it. First, the Big Bang Theory. This is a very well supported theory in which you'd be hard pressed to find any mainstream scientist refuting. A couple of the key points of evidence are listed here, starting with the red shifted light from distant stars and galaxies. See, light waves shift color based on wavelengths, just like how sound waves are higher pitched when an object is coming at you and lower pitched as it moves away, such as the car horn in this video. When a star or galaxy is moving toward us, the light waves are being compressed, they are shorter, causing them to shift blue in color. When a star is moving away from us, the light waves are stretching out, they are becoming longer, and that star appears to shift red in color. Second, the cosmic microwave background, one of the coolest and one of my favorite scientific discoveries ever. Remember red shifted light that we just talked about? Yet yeah, scientists using the Big Bang Theory predicted that the leftover radiation from the heat of the Big Bang would be traceable if we looked far enough into space. Furthermore, because of the billions of light years it would have to travel, the light would be shifted so far red that the waves would be microwaves. In 1964, the cosmic background radiation was found and mapped, showing us a baby picture of the universe when it was only 380,000 years old. This is something that the Big Bang model predicted and got right. The third point is the abundance of light elements, primarily hydrogen and helium. The model predicted that these elements were formed early on in the universe in the first few minutes after the Big Bang, and that the heavier elements such as carbon or boron or neon, oxygen, iron, and so on, would have been formed later on in the fusion reactors of the stars. Currently, about 98% of the universe is made up of hydrogen and helium, with the remaining few percent making up the rest of the elements. Another shot and score by the Big Bang model. See how science provides evidence, it's a beautiful thing. Now let's look at evolution. Point number one, comparative DNA. All animals share significant portions of DNA. Take for example, the fruit fly. Fruit flies have over 40%, some estimates even as far as 60%, share DNA with humans. Mice and humans share about 90% of their DNA and even yeast, yes, yeast, shares about 26%. Point two, similar anatomical properties. This one doesn't require too much detail, it's quite simple. Most animals share a lot of the same anatomical properties. There are some exceptions to this, like some humans missing a brain, but you get the point. The next four points we can go over as one. The fossil record is definitive proof of evolution. The fact that we have transitional fossils, and a lot of them, helps quite a damn bit. The whale is one of my favorite transitional series of fossils. It's truly incredible.
Also, fossils are never found in the wrong strata layers in the ground. Basically, the deeper you go, the older the fossils are going to be. You'll never see a T-Rex on the same layer as a Dimetrodon. These guys lived over 200 million years apart from each other, so the Dimetrodon is going to be significantly deeper than a T-Rex. Or you'll never find a bear dog on the same layer as a Gastorus. On a side note, I use these examples because they are some really cool and interesting animals if you want to check them out. I definitely recommend it. Another point is that we find the deeper into the evolutionary record we look, the less complex the organisms become, supporting the notion that as life evolves, it becomes more complex. Now, when we look at intelligent design, we don't really see any empirical evidence. Cause Bible and God said so. In all seriousness, let's look at some of the claims for intelligent design. Everything is designed with such precision, and extol how perfectly we are designed. Last episode, I actually touched on this. If you look at a human, they are the opposite of what a brilliant designer would design. I mean, humans can die from eating too much. Humans can and do die from choking due to their body trying to breathe and eat at the same time. And look at all of the leftover body parts that we have that we don't need or use. Use. Our tailbone, useless. The Jacobson organ, useless. Male nipples, fun but useless. The appendix, goosebumps, ear muscles, neck ribs, the palmaris muscle. Why would these useless things be included in a perfect design? It does not make sense! Okay, so how about the universe being finely tuned for life to exist? Honestly, if you believe this, you're probably just religious. From asteroids to supernovae, gamma rays, meteorites, radiation, extreme temperatures, and almost no habitable places in the universe. How is this a good design? The beauty of God's design, pointless to talk about. Scientists not knowing how life started, therefore God. We actually covered this back in episode three. Basically because scientists do not know exactly how life started. Religious nuts like to just say, well, because you don't know, therefore God, which is pretty pointless, so it's not even worth talking about. Okay, what's next? Ah, okay, the chances of a life-friendly universe are nearly impossible. Okay, so how to think about this one? Well, we are in a universe, and that universe formed and supports life. We know that. We are proof. So therefore, the chances of it happening don't mean a goddamn thing. And the last one... Oh, fucking Christ, shoot me. Jesus. All right, well, this tangent has went on a little bit too long, so let's move on. So let's get right into it. Welcome to the party. Now, what's important to recognize here is what is science? That clip, what is science, is a great description of the rest of your video, and I'll probably be referring back to that clip a few more times in this video. Okay, so if people believe that evolution in the Big Bang is scientific fact, well, let's take an, a moment here and examine what science actually means by definition. <laughs> Oh, I am sure that you are the perfect person to tell us what science is. I'll read it to you. Honestly, after watching your video, I'm shocked that you can read, seeing as though you have no idea how to read a textbook. The study of the natural world through, and get this, this is key, observation and experiment. You all know what's coming next. So, those of you out there who just blindly, foolishly believe that the Big Bang and the evolutionary theory is actual science? Buddy, buddy, no, 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 hold on. You are the one who believes foolishly and with blind faith in something. Evidence is not blind faith, you retard. Well, who was there 13.8 billion years ago to observe and experiment on this so that we know it's scientific fact? No one was. No one could have been. Okay, you can observe something indirectly. This is done daily in many, many fields. Using this logic, if you were a detective and say you walked into a room where a dead person is laying on the ground with three stab wounds and a bloody knife beside the body, you'd be like, Look away, please. Nothing to see here. You can see how bad that logic fails. So therefore, it is not science. No, you just don't know what science is. It is a theory, always will be a theory. Oh, shocking, a religious person doesn't know what a theory is. Okay, well, let me clarify what a scientific theory is. It's not the same as what you think it is. A scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world, based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. Such fact-supported theories are not guesses, but reliable accounts of the real world. Motherfucker. It's impossible to prove scientifically because science by very definition is observable. So unless someone's observing it, always going to be a theory.
We can observe red shifted galaxies, the cosmic microwave background, elements in the universe, the fossil records, DNA, and mountains of more data. Perhaps doing 10 minutes of research instead of an ignorant YouTube video would help your understanding of basic science. Now if you can supply me with one piece of empirical evidence for intelligent design, we might be able to have a slight discussion. So you need a lot of faith to believe in this nonsense. The lack of a properly functioning brain can be the only explanation for some Somebody being so fucking stupid. It's that 13.8 billion years ago there was a great nothing. And this nothing, for no reason, no purpose. A purpose is not needed at all. Just because you can form a question like, what is the purpose of the universe? Or why did the Big Bang occur? Is equal to saying, what are the emotions of jelly? Or what is the color of smell? Just because you can form a question does not mean that it has a legitimate answer. Just spontaneously, just boom, explodes. And this explosion, this atomic bomb, you could say. What? No, the Big Bang was not a fucking bomb. The term Big Bang was just a term that Fred Hoyle used to describe the event on a radio broadcast back in the 40s. There was no bang, no explosion, no fucking atomic bomb. The Big Bang was an expansion of space. It was not expanding into anything because space is all there is, or exploding in anything, as your dense head seems to think. 13.8 billion years ago, the energy of the universe was in a singularity, a small point smaller than a grain of sand. There was no matter, it was just energy. The space between everything expanded so fast that it was like a big bang, as Fred Hoyle put it. Somehow, somehow bombs create stuff? <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't believe that you are truly this stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this bomb, this explosion goes off, all matter, and then all the intelligent life forms come into existence. You really are the dumbest fucking person that I have ever seen on YouTube. Congrats, buddy, congrats. I mean, uh, the laws that make my heart govern this body and the cells. Biology. And the, the brain function. Neurology. And uh, the, the way that the wind works. Meteorology. And the, and the way that the sun and the moon. The astronomers that you don't believe in. And the, the ocean. If we go into the, the uh, animal kingdom, all the different, man, just sit there and watch planet Earth for a moment. Look how intelligent our universe is. Perhaps reading a science book would help you understand anything that you've talked about, rather than watching the Discovery Channel. Or perhaps the Disney Channel might be better suited to your brain's capacity. They want you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad joke. That all of this intelligent design that we see in the universe, this obvious intelligence, came about for no reason. No intelligence behind it. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. It took about 9.3 billion years to form a planet we know of as Earth. Single-celled life formed about a billion years after that, and human life formed about 3.5 billion years after that. That's a really, really long and inefficient way of creating life. And what the fuck is it with you people and everything needing to have a reason? The observable universe is about 90 billion light years in diameter, one light year being about 5.8 trillion miles makes the universe 522 sep fucking tillion miles wide. And do you think there's intelligence to that? Just look at these homegrown issues that threaten life on a daily basis and combine them with a few of the threats from outside the planet that threaten our life on a daily basis. And please let me know just how intelligently this universe was designed for life. Just spontaneous explosion. Boom, bomb goes off 13.8 billion years ago and gives us the entire universe that we have today. This is the stupidest theory in the world. Well, you believe an atomic bomb went off in the middle of space and from that formed galaxies and life, so I'll concede your understanding of the Big Bang, while extremely wrong and uneducated, is in fact the stupidest theory in the world. Oh, thank you for finishing that sentence for me. That was nice. And the majority of you believe it because your school teachers told you it's fact. The textbooks literally lied to you. They had lies in it and you blindly believed your teacher, and because society and everyone else believes this, you're like, yeah, 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 that's what it is. Uh, no. Okay, so we have two scenarios here. Either every scientist on the planet is inferior to your vast intelligence, or you, the hipster McDouchebag who literally doesn't understand anything of what he's talking about, is a complete moron. I'm gonna go with the latter of the two. No, God gave us a brain so that we could use it, okay? Okay. We were intelligently designed so that we could use our intelligence. Can you, uh, 
Can you give me some evidence on that? Any, please? A little bit? Just just a, a tad bit of evidence, please? Okay. Okay? Okay. So use it. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, just use your fucking brain! Oh, that's just all we're asking you to do. Okay. Um, now, let's look at intelligent design. What does intelligent design teach or the Bible teach? Uh, well, I'm going to say nothing, but if you want to go look at the story of Lot, then it teaches you to give your virgin daughters away to get gang raped by the townspeople. Uh, I guess it teaches that. That God, who, you have to understand the nature of God, because you're going to say, well, if God created the universe, then who created God? Ha <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Um, yeah, yeah, you kind of got yourself there, buddy. Yeah, um, if, if God created the universe, then he would have had to have had a beginning point. Y you know what I'm saying? Who created God? What a stupid question. What is science? What a stupid question. And yes, there are stupid questions. That's a dumb one. Who created God? Do you not even understand the very nature of God? He is alpha. He is omega. He is beginning and end. He's eternal. Uh, okay, if, if God is beginning and God is the end... Uh, that, that does not make him eternal. That gives him a beginning, and that gives him an end. That makes him not eternal. Am I the only one hearing this? So for you to try and fit him into something that has a beginning, which created things need a beginning, doesn't make any sense. Again, use the intelligent brain that God gave you. Okay, I'll use my brain, something you're incapable of, and I'll think of a paradox. Let's talk about how proving God's existence would prove God is nothing more than a natural law, not supernatural. If there was a way to prove God, it would have to be through a measurement, an observation, a calculation, or something empirical. Thereby proving God's existence by observation or measurement would erase the super and just make God a natural law. You could make an argument that this is exactly what happened back in 2012 when the Higgs boson, the God particle, was discovered. And what you're going to see here is that God had, he's eternal. And that makes sense. He's an eternal God who's above us. Just because we can't comprehend him doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. You can't comprehend the definition of faith, so I'll take your word for it that you can't comprehend this either. Science, in fact, proves an intelligent designer. Because everywhere we look in nature, including our own bodies, in, like I said, planet Earth, you go out there and you, you look at nature and, and the bugs and how they work and certain insects, it, it's, it's a miracle. Oh, the beauty of God's creation. Like the spider wasp, which paralyzes its victim and lays eggs inside the spider's body so that when the eggs hatch, they can eat the still living spider from the inside out. Or the warble fly, which lands on animals, including humans, and plants eggs inside their skin. After a few days, the eggs hatch, burrow down under the scalp, where they wander around for a little bit until they're surgically removed, hopefully before causing blindness. Oh, the beauty of God's creation. Now, what's so funny too is even the biggest people who push this always fall back with dumb stuff, okay? Okay. You have uh, Richard Dawkins, and he goes out and he says, and I, I just heard Bill Nye say the same thing, you know, well, you know, it's not God that created the universe, but it could be aliens. <laughs> Jesus Fuck, dude, your laugh is psychotic. Seriously, your laugh scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> but this further shows your inability to understand anything. You've misrepresented literally everything in your video. What they are talking about is a hypothesis that since Mars would have cooled much, much faster than Earth due to its size, that life could have evolved first and permeated to Earth. Here is the exact fucking video that you are referring to. It's very reasonable. Absolutely not proven. We, have the, we may have the means to prove it. Very reasonable that you and I are descendant of extraterrestrials. We just found liquid water on Mars, super salty water on Mars that flows every, apparently flows every Martian year. Every, every time Mars goes around the sun, it gets warm enough in this one area, liquid water flows. For a while, briny water evaporates. Very reasonable that there's something alive on Mars, or certainly that there was something alive on Mars. Then it's very reasonable that Mars was hit with an impact, well, it's, you can show that Mars was hit with an impactor, a uh, comet or asteroid, about three billion years ago. 
and some of the material of Mars was thrown off into space and some of it landed here. We find rocks on Earth that are clearly of Martian origin. I bought one online for kicks. And suppose some especially robust Martian microbe, a Mars probe, was in this piece of material, landed on Earth at an especially fertile time here on Earth three billion years ago, and you and I are descendants of Martians. And there we go, you completely failed to comprehend yet again something that has nothing to do with the beginning of the universe, you fucking moron. Why is he saying that? Let, let, let's pause for a moment here, okay? Okay. Why are these guys who for so long, okay, okay, have said there's no intelligent designer are now starting to backtrack a little bit and saying, well, you know, we might be intelligently designed, but it's not, it's not the God of the Bible. No, it's little green Martian men who come and fly in their spaceships. They created us. Mars was hit with an impact tour, a uh, comet or asteroid about three billion years ago. And some of the material of Mars was thrown off into space and some of it landed here. We find rocks on Earth that are clearly of Martian origin. Suppose some especially robust Martian microbe, a Mars probe, was in this piece of material, landed on Earth at an especially fertile time here on Earth three billion years ago. Yes, he's obviously talking about little green people. You see what they just did? And this is key for you to get. They just disproved their own theory that they've been standing for forever. Why? Because if Martians created us, that means intelligent design is right. Number one, I love that you keep checking your notes. Number two, I love that this is the best piece of evidence that you have for intelligent design is that Bill Nye said that there's green people that created us when he said absolutely no such thing and you just are too fucking stupid to listen to what anybody actually has to say. Okay, so you see even the main leaders in this evolution movement have to fumble logically on their own theory. You do realize that the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution are not the same fucking thing. They have nothing to do with each other. What, what am I even talking about? Obviously you don't know. Fucking Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and just, just go through this because I know so many people get stuck up on this. You get you go to school, especially you you young people, and you'll run into that atheist and he thinks he knows everything. It's so funny. Their their heads are puffed up but they don't know anything. It's it's hilarious. Okay, your head is literally puffed up and you don't know what you're talking about, but let's just skim through the rest of this since it's all the same bullshit. Uh and, and they'll come up to you and be like, well don't you know it's scientific fact. <laughs> no it's not buddy. No it's not. No no, I, I know you want to keep believing your textbooks. I know you want to keep believing your t-shirts and what's popular in school. And you want to believe what they tell you, but guess what? They're lying to you. Oh yes, chemistry and cosmology and physics are definitely the new cool hip thing in school nowadays. You realize that just simply understanding physics means that you don't really have to look in a textbook. Maybe if you actually were educated, this wouldn't be so surprising to you. They're straight up lying. And it's not fact. It is not science. It's a stupid theory that takes massive amounts of faith to believe in. Unobservable 13.8 billion years ago. We can observe all of the evidence that I presented in the beginning of this video. You know what we can observe from your side? Nothing. Take Noah's Ark, for example. No kangaroo fossils from where they traveled from the Middle East to Australia. No evidence of a worldwide flood. No evidence of a behemoth ark. And absolutely no evidence that Noah ever even existed. And you think science requires faith? No, faith requires people like you who are too uneducated and completely blind to reality to accept anything that goes against their beliefs. Now some religious people actually do acknowledge science, and I have absolutely no problem with those who do. But it's people like you who make everybody who follows any religion look like a complete fucking moron. But anyway, that's it for the, today's show. I can't take any more of this guy. I already know what he's gonna say the rest of the video, and it's basically the same thing we've been covering for 25 minutes. But anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you to all the people who are subbing and liking and sharing my videos. That's awesome. I'll be back in a few days with another video, but until then, Enjoy!